All right, everyone, welcome to the first of several clinics um, for the 604 uh, rookies and others uh, provided by the coaches. Um, apologies for this one not being recorded during the actual session. Um, an error on my part meant that it didn't get recorded, so I'm doing this um, after the fact. Um, but hopefully that means it's a little bit more succinct for you guys. Um, so just to get started, um, the main idea behind this is to help you guys uh, focus your practice a little bit more. Um, I know uh, that I have always struggled with that. I've been sim racing for lots of years now and really struggled to make my practice extremely useful. I kind of would just go out and do as many laps as I possibly could, trying to hit a better lap time but not ever really specifically focusing on the skills that would make me faster. Um, or even if I was, it was kind of here and there, um, not super focused, uh, not super structured. And uh, that, of course, doesn't lead to very uh, consistent um, or uh, very good results. Um, so that's basically what this is. Um, and the first thing that uh, basically we need to know about this is we're, this is going to encompass a bunch of different skills. Um, it's going to go over, I don't actually know how many weeks this is going to be, but um, we're going to run it as long as there's information to talk about. Um, and what I'm going to aim to do is give you guys a breakdown of each specific kind of set of driving skills um, and go into a, a fair amount of detail to actually help you guys um, understand what's going on when we're doing certain things like braking or turning in, trail braking, um, getting back on the power, what we're looking for, what you should be aiming to do with the car. Um, and then more generally, basically, is um, the whole idea of this is kind of to be more aware of what we're doing when we're practicing um, and specifically being able to realize that we're not doing any of the specific things that are needed to drive quickly perfectly. Um, you know, it's really easy to kind of kid yourself into thinking, oh, like I'm, I'm braking pretty well, that's enough, or I'm, I'm turning in well enough, um, or I'm good enough at this particular skill. Um, and that, in almost every case, um, is just not true. Um, the real key to getting extremely fast, um, or at least a lot quicker than you are now, um, is to go and apply skills to the absolute maximum, 100% of what that skill can be, um, how or how that skill can be applied at that particular corner. Um, and that, that means some real dedication to actually um, sitting down in your rig and focusing on one or two things per night um, to allow you to get faster. Uh, and basically, uh, just to give you guys a quick idea, um, I'm going to break this down um, as simply as I can in terms of how I think the building blocks um, need to be set in order to improve one skill upon another. So um, in my books, it's, you know, it, it's no good focusing on improving skills on the exit of the corner if you haven't set the things up um, for, you know, before the corner, while you're at the apex of the corner, um, and then finally at the exit of the corner. Um, so, you know, if you haven't done your braking right and you haven't done your turn-in right, there's no point um, trying to fix your your exit because you're going to get a different, you're going to, you know, you're going to be at a slightly different place on the track. Um, you're going to be coming out at a slightly different speed um, with a slightly different steering angle. Um, so basically the idea is to build consistency all the way through um, your training and start with the very basic stuff uh, and then we can move forward. Um, so, uh, you know, without more uh, any further ado, um, I'll go into basically braking, which I think is, is the first thing that um, we need to get right. Um, I was kind of going back and forth between braking and, and line choice, um, but I think we really need a, a, a good understanding of how to set the car up for a corner, um, and then we can work on the fine tunings of, of uh, you know, racing line uh, a little bit later. So to get into braking, um, the first thing that we absolutely need to do um, when braking is to figure out, okay, what's what's my maximum capability of braking um, at any particular corner? What, how quickly can I get the car to stop um, at every single corner on the particular circuit that I'm at for the week? Um, and and that's that. It is actually a. There is a specific spot where if you brake perfectly, you will stop every time, and that is the the best place to brake. Um, the hard part is actually getting there and then and finding that place consistently. But it's important we find that place because 
that is the whole setup to the corner. So if you're not breaking at the same spot at the same pressure um, every lap, then you're getting inconsistent results as you try and turn in. Because if, say, if you know, if, if you try and break, let's say, let's back that up actually. If you try and break at the three meter board right here, one lap, and then you're trying and turn in at the two here, that may be fine one lap, but say on the second lap, if you break just before the three meter board, but you still turn in at the two, you're carrying less speed when you start turning in at the two meter board. So you're gonna have turned in too early. So the idea behind always having the exact same brake spot with the exact same brake pressure is that you provide consistency for yourself going through the rest of the motions in the corner, going through your trail braking, the turn in, um, hitting the apex, and then your exit. Um, so every car, it's usually different for every car, but every car has a maximum braking capability for each corner. Um, however, what we try and do is, I think intuitively, we generally understand that 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 is the case. Um, and so we're always trying to break as late as possible. And that's okay in, in theory, but in practice, generally what that means is we go from, okay, I know, you know, X break marker is a safe space to, to break, but I don't know where the the actual maximum breaking spot is. So you just try and break as late as possible. And what that actually leads to is you going wide or spinning or locking up on a lot of laps at a lot of corners, um, trying to find that optimal breaking spot for the car. So what we really should be doing is actually something a little bit more like this. Well, I'll show you actually what the error is first. Um, so let's go and find this and let's go to our onboard. So, basically, actually, let's go, let's, can we find, there we go, okay, so let's back up, and let us turn on our HUD. So, basically, at this corner, as a rough idea, I'm tending, you know, we, we, we pretty much all know the two meter board is a little bit too late. Um, and you're, you're looking for, you know, this is a kind of a tough corner because there's no real braking marker with the meter boards. Two, three is too early, two is too late. Um, so I'm looking to break somewhere around the middle of this, um, of this light patch in the gravel. Um, so as you see here, that's a relatively safe space to break. Well, I'll back it up for you so you can see. Yeah, so we, you know, at, at every corner, most of us have a spot where we kind of, we feel safe, that we know we can make the corner. So when initially learning the, the braking zones, we break there. So as you saw, braked roughly in the middle of that. I'll slow it down for you guys as well, just so you can see. So coming up to the corner, I know I'm going to make it breaking here. Break about now. There we go. But if we roll that back quickly it's pretty clear that there's time left on the table. I kind of came into the corner a little bit slow. I could get on the gas really early. I wasn't all the way out to the exit. You, you know, most drivers can feel that there's time left on the table there. Now, what a lot of us do, myself included, is the next time around, we'll go to the corner, that same corner, and we're gonna try and break really late. The problem with that is you completely interrupt your rhythm. Look how late. So, you know, you and lock up, go wide, and your whole lap is ruined. You And you actually didn't really gain very infor much, much information about what's happening at this corner because you went too deep. So you're basically, you know, the, we know our safe breaking point is roughly about here. And... I've chosen to break right about here. The problem with that is you've got all this distance now that you you don't actually have any useful information on. You just know you can break here and you can't break here. But all this is kind of no man's land. So you break much too late and then like we saw we're deep locking up and all that. So other the other thing about not having you know about we're losing the information about us uh, you know a fairly large portion of the braking zone is that you've you've ruined your consistency so now that you've gone wide here your your brake you know you're going to be carrying less speed going going onto the straight 
which means that you're going to be compromised for your braking information at the next corner because you're going to be going slower than you normally would. Um, so it really, and, and, and in a really bad scenario, you, you know, you might be off the track, you might crash, you might have to go back to the pits and start all over again and get your tires warmed up, yada, yada, yada. So the, the problem with, with that approach is it also ruins your consistency um, and, and that really slows down your progress. So what you really want to be doing is going at really small increments every single lap so you go to your you, you know you, you would find your initial you know quote unquote safe braking spot and then at every following lap you break just a tad later every single time until you find that you can no longer break any later without either locking up massively engaging the abs going wide crashing all that kind of stuff so basically this would be an example this lap here of you know breaking much more incrementally let's slow it down so we know that um, on the first lap I was breaking about here and now break just a tad later it was maybe only a few meters a few meters difference right there let's back it up again perfect so basically start breaking there it's just a few meters difference i probably started breaking here on the first lap now i'm breaking here and that makes a really big difference because as you'll see we're not going wide we're still carrying good speed and make it through the corner now there's probably still some time on the table there we can probably still break even later but now we actually know that we say okay i can try it a little bit later so what we really want to do is build up a much more incremental strategy to finding out that kind of peak braking spot for the car. Um, and at some point, you know, you will go too deep or you will lock up or the ABS will be engaging like crazy, but that's fine. So you only, that only happened to you once. If you're constantly trying to break massively late, that's going to happen to you multiple times at multiple corners. And every time that happens to you, your rhythm's kind of messed up. So go the incremental route, be disciplined about it, and at every corner just break slightly later every time until you hit that point where you just absolutely know that you can't break any later. The other thing that that really helps with is once you've found that spot where you know, say, you know, at, at a given corner, it's the 100, well, actually, let's go find this one. For me, pretty much at this corner, depending on the conditions, this four meter board is about as, as late as I can break. Um, on with this level of fuel um once you know that you can't break any later than let's say this four meter board then you know and you can apply that into the race right so if you're coming side by side with someone and you're on the inside and you know that at the latest you can break is the four there's an absolutely no point breaking later than the four because you know that you can't stop the car if you break later than the four and you know you will go wide so that helps with the information when you're actually in a race situation because it means that you can make good decisions about how late you can actually break. Um, and, and the other thing too is you could even, you know, you could technically force someone into trying to break later than they actually can. So if you're side by side and you know the latest you break is the four, you break at the four and they try and break at the, you know, three and a half, you know they're going to go deep because they they just won't be able to control the car. So it's a good way, once you find that maximum point, of actually tempering yourself and your efforts during the race to knock it into sticky situations by trying to break later than physics actually allow for. Now, to move on from that, you know, you, you guys go out and practice this, um, you get pretty consistent a lot of corners, you know your maximum breaking point, and you go and watch laps from the pros or from some alien laps, and obviously we want to make sure they're comparable laps, so it's no good going out, um, you know, on a warmer track with, you know, heavy fuel, and then saying, oh, well, you know, aliens can break later, but they're on, you know, quality fuel and a quite a cool track, so obviously you want to try and find comparable um, instances. But, you know, if you're still finding, if you go out, online or watching the pros and you still find that you're like hey people are i know people are breaking later than me and they're still making the corner what's the issue well this gets into a little bit more of the fine details um, but basically it comes down to learning the maximum capability braking capability of the car you are currently in um, and i'm going to give a little bit more general information on this um, basically 
you know, that, that will cover multiple sims and mul multiple kinds of cars, not just ACC. Um, but I'll go through it relatively quickly. The idea is, basically, the more downforce the car you're driving possesses, the harder you can apply the brake initially. And by harder, I mean the closer to 100% brake pressure you can get without locking up or engaging the ABS. Um, however, as you begin to slow down in high downforce cars, the amount of downforce that is actually being generated reduces quite quickly, which means in some of them, you also need to release that very hard initial brake pressure quite quickly. So in a formula car, for example, you can hit 100% brake pressure quite quickly, but you'll all know probably from you know F1 games or uh, mods in, in Assetto Corsa, for example, that you also need to start lifting off that 100% pressure quite quickly because otherwise the tires will begin to lock because the you begin to lose the aerodynamic pressure pushing down on the tires, generating more grip. Um, so the idea is that you, yeah, you can go right to 100, but then you need to lift off relatively quickly. Um, lower downforce cars or medium downforce cars, um, you can... It's, it, it will depend on the car how much initial pressure you can apply, but generally it isn't 100%. It's quite rare to find a, a medium or low downforce car that you can literally apply 100% brake pressure um, right at the beginning of the, the brake zone because there's just basically too much, too much momentum in the car and not enough grip to allow the tires to, to grip and not lock up. Um, so generally you can apply less initial force, but you can hold that force for longer because you're not losing aerodynamic um, grip or the aerodynamic or grip that's generated aerodynamically as you slow down. Um, that's a general rule. Um, just to give you an idea, GT3 cars tend to be pretty high downforce cars um, in ACC. Uh, for those of you in iRacing, they're not you can't generally brake quite as hard in a GT3 car in iRacing as you can in ACC. Um, and then the GT4 cars are much more mechanical grip cars, so you can brake pretty hard in those. Um, but uh, and you can maintain that grip. But generally, your you know your initial peak pressure is probably going to be a little bit less. But yeah, most of the GT3 cars in ACC you can brake very close to um, 100%, and we'll actually see that uh, quite shortly. Um, following that. Um, I'll just give a quick explanation of why we don't want to lock. That's very, you know, that seems quite simple, but also why we don't want to engage the ABS too much. So locking, you know, just to go through it really quickly, um, is basically when the tire starts skidding rather than rotating. Um, and if the tire is skidding, what's happening is you're actually, um, you know, the, the tire's not, <clears throat> excuse me, rotating, so you end up um, sliding across the tracks. So you're not actually slowing down optimally. It seems, you know, it's quite simple to understand. We have all felt it. It's no good. Um, what we want to continue to um, avoid also, however, is too much engaging of the ABS, because basically what happens is in modern cars, it's a quite, you know, impressive technology, but the car's computer begin is realizing that at that brake pressure or a little bit more brake pressure than you're currently applying, the tires are gonna to begin to lock. So what it does is it slightly releases the brake pressure that you currently have. So say you've engaged at 95%, the car thinks you're gonna lock. Well, it releases it to say 93% and then you know goes back on to 95% really quickly um, in very short succe succession, basically to keep the car from locking up and to keep you slowing down properly. However, what that actually does is it means you're going up and down between brake pressure. So it's not, it's not a perfect braking situation. You're altering your pressure, which is kind of pitching the car back and forward very minutely, um, but you're also not getting that perfect peak pressure. So what we wanna do is we wanna avoid completely engaging the ABS. The ABS engaging just a little bit, so where it's kind of just flickering a few times in the corner means you're right on the edge that means you're at the perfect braking point, um, or brake pressure rather. So especially in ACC where the cars do rely on, um, on the ABS, it's okay to see the ABS flashing, but you don't want it either like fully lit up or you don't want it blinking really fast the whole way through the braking zone because that means that you're engaging the ABS um, completely. So what we wanted, what we, the, basically the brake pressure that you want to aim for is where you see the ABS 
engaging just a little bit, a few times throughout the corner, which means you've really aced your max peak pressure. Um, and I'll show that. Um, unfortunately, I can't actually show the ABS in replay because it doesn't it doesn't show it engaging. But what I will show is the the actual distance in um, braking uh, from when you apply the brakes a hundred percent versus when you apply what the actual max peak pressure is. Um, so if you just give me a second to find it. Um, so same corner as we were observing before. And just watch the brake pressure here. Um, so I'll break at the three, here, actually just pause it. I'll break at the three meter board so it provides a good reference for you guys of break in the same spot both times. And now you can just watch the, the brake pressure. So that was 100, let's just back it up very slightly here. So that was 100% brake pressure almost the whole way through. You got, some of you guys actually may have noticed that, that I was um, lifting and um, modulating a little bit at the end there, and that was just more out of habit. But this gives you a basic idea um, of um, what's, you know, what it looks like um, to be at 100% brake pressure. And let's see if I can manage to show you guys. Yeah, there we go. So, basically we'll count from here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven squares, basically. Now, if we go to the following lap with a little bit of modulation and, and paying attention to where that, um, that uh, basically ABS begins to engage, Let's just see here. So, same thing. Oh, let's speed it up. Now watch the peak pressure. So same braking, same braking spot. Slightly compromised, but I'll back that guy's up. I'll back that up for you and just slow it down. I never actually reach a hundred percent. I'm kind of modulating the whole way through. Now, let's just see here. Now, the important thing, and I'm actually going to show you, I will show you a different car, but there's going to be a difference between some cars and to how much this makes a difference. But let's just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's not a big difference, but we've actually gained, you know, whether this is a foot or two feet um, of braking distance. So it is better to brake just slightly less. Now, I will say that the actual the ABS system in the um, Audi is is really quite good. Um, so that it's not a huge difference. There is a difference, but it's not a huge difference. Um, I'll actually load another replay really quickly and show you the difference in the Merc because it is actually a lot bigger. Um, and it'll kind of prove my point of why this is a really good exercise um, to do. So let's just turn on the HUD here. Apologies for the very bright pink. So this should be the 100%. Um, yeah, all the way through 100%. I think the car actually stalls. There we go. So we're at complete stop here. And if we go and check out how many squares we've got. One, two, three, four. Only four squares. So right away we actually see um, the Audi's got a little bit better stopping power. Um, at least when it comes to the ABS. So this just tells us that the, the Audi ABS is better. Um, now, if we go to the lap where we're modulating, we can run this, take a look at the modulation here. The same spot. And let's go here. One, two, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the modulating between the Merc and the Audi is actually identical. But the ABS on the Merc alone is a four square difference. One, two, three, four, because we, we, we only stopped here in the, with 100% with brake pressure without the modulation. Um, so importantly, you know, that's maybe half a car's difference in stopping power. You know, when you add that up over an entire lap, you know, this doesn't, you know, you see stopping here versus stopping here doesn't seem like a lot over one corner, but over an entire lap, that becomes a lot more significant. And that's where you start to see, okay, one, two, three tenths improved a lap in the braking alone, nothing else. All you've done is slightly changed your braking to go from just 100% with the ABS engaged to say 95% peak pressure and then bleeding off a little bit. And that's the different the difference that you start getting. And that's why it's important to figure out for each particular car what the max peak pressure is. Um, and, and, you know, quite clearly it's, it's a little bit different in every car. You know, front engine versus mid engine is going to be a difference. Um, you know, we all know that the Porsche is quite good uh, on the brakes. So every car is going to be a little bit different. Um, so that's why, and, yeah, and once you find it, um, and the important thing is, and we'll get there in a second, is, is to initially find it on a flat surface. Um, and what I mean by flat surface is like you're not going, you know, you're not breaking onto a hill or you're not breaking downhill. Um, something like this where, you know, the, the car's, at a, on, on level ground and then you can figure out okay I can you know let's back this up I think my peak pressure was roughly around 95 here let's slow it down yeah maybe even more 98 something like that so but it's not 100 and that's basically where you feel that the you know the ABS is just slightly engaging um, and then and then you lift off a tiny little bit um, we'll get I think that we'll end, this will end up being another clinic, but we'll get to how you can start to train yourself just on the muscle memory um, of of how to get there to be, you know, consistently hit that brake pressure. Um, but basically, you know, now we know that if you're on a flat surface every single lap and you're coming to a hard braking zone, you can brake to, you know, 97, 98%. Um, and that will be the best place to, you know, to have your brake pressure to start slowing the car down. Um, the important part, and I think what'll be the last section of this clinic, um, is there are a few factors that are going to change what that max peak pressure is. Uh, I'll actually go back to our Audi, um, video to show that, but the first thing is, um, obviously your track temperature, um, your fuel level, uh, condition of the tires, um, and, you know, tire temp as well. So you know, the classic reminder, lap one, cold tires, heavy fuel, that makes a difference here. You're not going to be able to press the brake pedal as hard on laps one and two as you are going to be in the middle of the stint where the tires are nice, nicely warmed up but not fully used um, and you've, you know, you've dropped half your fuel load. First of all, cold tires means less grip. So right there, it means that you don't have as much grip available to brake. Second of, second of all, you've got a much heavier car, which means you need more braking force to slow the thing down. Um, so those things combined just means that you're probably going to not be able to brake as hard as you were before without engaging ABS. Alternatively, some of the, you know, some of these cars are quite good at braking. It might mean that you'll have to back up your braking marker as well. Um, but basically, the long and the short of it is, if you have your braking marker at a 100 meter board for a particular corner, and you try and brake at the 100 meter board on cold tires and heavy fuel, you will not stop. As you would have on the regular lap that you were running, um, you know, with warmed up tires and all that. So that's one thing. Um, more importantly, I would say, well, maybe not more importantly, but maybe a, a little bit more tricky to think of, um, is elevation change. Um, so basically, and this kind of goes back to, you know, physics of, uh, of the car. Um, I'll just run this in the background, but, um, as the car either weights or unweights over elevation changes in the track, your grip is increased or decreased. 
Um, so the first thing is, is basically over the crest of a hill, like we just saw the car do right now, um, as the car just gets to the crest, is at the top of the crest, and just after the top of the crest, the whole car is unweighting. Think of, you know, any time you've gone to drive, um, you know, a mountain road or a country road, and it's, you know, it's undulating a little bit, you know, you get to the top of the crest, you feel your whole body lift up a little bit, you feel the steering go light. Um, it's the same thing in the sim. And when you get that feeling, the car itself is also going up, which means there's way less grip available to the car. Um, so that's, you know, we'll talk about it as, as un, unweighting. And when that happens, you have, you know, less grips, which means less braking, less turning, and, you know, you can't get on the gas as much either. Um, so specifically applied to braking, that means if we're going over a crest while braking or um, during braking, our max peak pressure that we were talking about, say 98%, will drop because there's not as much grip available to get to that peak pressure. Um, conversely, when we go into compression, so that's when the car is basically, you know, as the car um, enters, just enters an uphill section. Um, so actually right here is, is a good example. It's going right into the hill right now. Um, another good example is uh, going into turn two at Bathurst, that long uphill section that you go into while you're braking. The car is compressing into the road. Um, basically you're driving you're driving into something that's a little bit uphill so you know you can kind of imagine the car starts to sit down as you get into that um, the second part is as the car is coming down off a hill and it goes in you know goes into that little dip that is also a compression and that means higher grip so higher grip means we can brake more turn more and accelerate more um, and it means that our maximum braking pressure also increases so in a lot of um, in a lot of cars, especially the GT3 cars, um, at some corners uh, on the ACC tracks, you're actually able to brake at 100% without engaging the ABS because you're entering that compression and there's just more grip available. Um, I actually really like Laguna as an example of that, and and this turn in particular um, is is a perfect example. So what we have here um, is a corner that. Initially, you're braking upwards, so you have, you know, you're going to have more grip here. But as soon as you hit this, there's actually two crests. There's one right here, there's a little dip, and there's the main one is right here, as we all know. Um, but the car is beginning to unweight right now, and is unweighted basically until roughly there. And that means that we're not able to brake as hard. One of two things is going to happen. If we brake at the same pressure we normally brake at, um, or, or maintain that pressure through the corner because we're braking earlier, um, the car will either spin or lock up, and it will likely go wide either way. Um, so uh, I'll show you an example of that. Um, if I can just find the lap here. Uh, I believe it's here. Um, so just take a look at and listen to the car and what happens, and I'll... I'll I'll go the HUD on here so you can see my brake pressure. Um, so yeah, just take a listen to what happens to the car here. So you get two two lockups, two individual lockups. Um, the first one's maybe a little bit hard to see, but you do see, do see the tire mark. Apologies there. Let's just back it up. The first one ends up being basically right on the left of the tire, right there, and then the second one comes right there, you can see it. Anyway, we ended up going a little bit wide. It wasn't terrible, but it wasn't perfect, and we locked twice. Um, so that was maintaining the same brake pressure, and I'll run it back one more time so you can see. So brake hard, same brake pressure through the whole way, and we lock up because the car unweights and we don't have enough grip to actually be able to brake at the proper pressure. Now, and this is where that kind of finesse really comes in, um, is braking initially hard because we're going uphill, we have that compression, and then releasing a little bit as we go over the crest to kind of mimic the road. You know, you brake hard going into the hill, as the hill rises, our brake pressure releases a little bit, and then as we descend back into the compression at the end of the hill, then we can increase our brake pressure again. Um, so let's go find that lap. I believe it was here. Um, so we'll run at full speed first. And just watch the brake pressure here. Initially good, and then lift off a little bit. Then we go back on it, 
And then we have a really good line for that corner. So that's the idea. Um, and then we'll run it back a little bit slower for you guys. But basically, you know, it's the same braking points. So you brake hard and then just lift off a little bit. Keeps the car under control. And then we go back on as we start to descend again. And then we can turn into the corner. Um, so that's where, you know... It, more difficult because you every corner you kind of have to think about it um this actually next one is a good example you can't break very hard here because you're going you know you're falling the track's falling away from you so there's less grip available so you know if you get most of you will know if you press too hard on the brakes here even just a little bit the rear end will have a tendency to go out on you because it just there's you know there's not enough grip um the important thing here is it's quite easy to spot a big crest like this or like the one, um, you know, multiple ones at Bathurst, for example. But where this skill really starts to um, to go into the nitty gritty and where you're going to start to find, you know, just half a tenth, right? You know, a half a tenth at one corner and a half a tenth at another is a tenth a lap that you're faster. And you add that up over time and that's where your consistency begins to grow. Um, but basically, this this corner here actually has a small compression the track comes away and then gets you know like it, it there's a very small dip in the track and it comes back to you which means you can just break a little bit harder not much um, and this lap I don't actually do it but that's the kind of thing where you actually want let's see if I can just spot it for you guys maybe looking the other way will help um, So it, it generally looks flat, but let's just go back in the cockpit here, back it up, not that way. Um, in the yeah, there you go. So in the cockpit, you see that spot right there, and base and even just coming into it, there's a slight dip, which means there's going to be a little bit, a little bit more of a compression. So you can press that brake just one or two percent more. And and that's where you start to take advantage of an elevation change, you know, everywhere um, along the track. Um, so that's kind of applying this rule just to the minute detail and finding those little that little bit of time here and there um, uh, to be able to to get faster. I'm going to leave it there. Um, the last thing I'll say is. Um, We'll, we'll get into a few more details about, about braking in the next clinic. Um, but basically what I want you guys to remember is this is, you know, this is stepping stone number one. And the reason, the reason I'm going to build it up like this is because if we can get these skills that we mentioned today consistent. So the first thing is finding where the car, um, you know, where the best place or the, the last place the car can brake consistently and make the corner. Um, is and doing that incrementally so we're not you know finding our safe place and then going all the way to breaking super late and locking up or spinning and going too wide you know doing it incrementally so a little bit at a time gain that consistency um, the second is finding that max peak pressure of the car um, so that's first of all going out and seeing what it feels like to completely lock up the brakes or engage the APS and then going out and and you know, starting to feel when the car is just on the limit of engaging the ABS, but isn't totally. Um, so finding that max peak pressure, be it 98%, 95%, whatever, you know, it's going to be car dependent. And then thirdly, um, realizing that track temperature, tire pressure, or uh, yeah, tire pressure, tire temp, um, condition of the tires, fuel load will affect that max peak pressure, um, but also that elevation changes in the track, which alter your level of grip, are also going to have effects on that, so that will change your braking corner to corner. Um, applying that stuff first at a base level, learning it slowly, like don't, you know, don't worry if you don't get this in the first few sessions, this takes, you know, a long time to get perfectly right but now that you guys know the steps it's going to be a lot easier to apply in your daily practice um, all that is basically building a consistent level for your initial the first thing that you're doing at every corner I mean and the corners are the important parts uh, of racing right like if we're just you know if we're just in a straight line we're drag racing we're not circuit racing um, so the corners are really where um, you know boys for men kind of thing the you know the aliens from us um, mere mortals it's in the, it's all in the corners um, so 
you build a consistent level for the first thing that we're doing in the corners, which is your initial pressure and where we're actually breaking. And then slowly we can start to build on that as we get further into the clinics um, of what follows that. But what we need is that consistent level of knowing exactly what we're going to do every single lap at every single corner. Um, and then we can build on that. So I'll leave it at that. Thanks for listening. It went longer than I wanted it to, but hope there's a lot of information here and feel free to, to DM, DM me on uh, Discord or, or post a message in the um, you know House of Practice or coaching discussion uh, if you guys have any questions about it. Thanks.